Welcome back to the Weave Lounge. This is another one of our love it or hate it reviews, but this one's a little odd because it's not a specific anime per se, as rather it is a specific season from a certain anime. I am going to be talking about Data Live, season three, an anime that I absolutely hate. Now, the first and second season of Data Live is one of those shows that I just really enjoyed. I, you know, at first you think it's going to be like a generic harem anime, but it gets to be a little bit better, a little bit more inclusive, a little bit more detailed. Interesting characters, interesting powers. Overall, a series that I just absolutely enjoy. I don't put it as a number one on top of my list, but it's certainly an anime that I like. So when season three was announced to come out, I was like, all right, season three. I've read some of the visual, not, not the visual novels, the light novels. This guy right here, right here. I've read some of these, translated of course, and I knew pretty much where the story was going to go. So I was really, really curious how they were going to do this in the anime itself. And oh my God, they couldn't have botched it any worse. It is so freaking bad. Spoilers ahead. As with all these reviews, there are spoilers. So just assume that from now on because, yeah. Essentially, this series starts off. It, it, they introduce Natsumi, the Halloween dressed-ish girl who's good with illusions and stuff. And basically, it's a little lolly kid or whatever, but she has a complex or whatever. So she makes herself look more of an adult, but she's really just a kid, whatever. It's, it, I, I like the character, but it, she's actually completely unimportant. She's completely unimportant. The main three for season three, the main three characters, Shido, of course, Origami, and Kurubi. Toka even takes a back seat. She's there, she fights and does a few things, whatever, and she's over here, and it's fine. She, she doesn't even need to be there. Now, just a little bit of detail. Kurumi is very arguably the absolute most powerful spirit there is. Period. You can't kill her. She has an infinite number of copies of herself through every single timeline possible, so literally infinite lives. If one gets finished off, she just pulls another one in, everything's kind of connected. She is infinitely powerful. You can't kill her. The only way to kill her is to destroy all of time itself. So Kurumi, you can't kill her. She's the most powerful one. I don't care what anybody says. She's the bestest, most powerful. I like her the most. Yeah, I know. But here's the gist of it. Origami, the reason she is the way she is is because her parents were killed by a spirit, okay? And realizing that Kurumi, you know, she's a master of time and such, finds out that Kurumi can actually send someone back in time, okay? Now, in the novel and stuff, you know, this isn't an easy task for Kurumi, okay? She needs a certain amount of power. This is why she was kind of hunting down other spirits and everything, because she needs to collect power in order for her to transport herself or anyone else through time. Long story short, through an act of relative kindness, especially considering from Kurumi, she agrees to send Origami back in time. And Origami has to try to prevent her parents' death. She doesn't want her parents to die. And that's why in the anime, you see like there's a couple of different little timelines, right? You see the one where Origami is kind of like this you know, happy-go-lucky girl, long hair and everything. Her parents, you know, didn't die, blah, blah, blah. But everything's kind of intertwined and connected and such. But in this book, it goes into a lot of detail, all right? I don't want to go into, you know, give away really much of anything or whatever. But, you know, it's a bigger ordeal for Kurumi to send someone back into time and as opposed to just, okay, go back in time, see what you can do. It's not like that. You know, Kurumi, you know, she can't do it that easily. She might be really powerful. She might be able to stop time, pause time, do a little bit of things here and there. But yeah, everything takes a little bit of power. And to actually go so far back in time takes power. And there's a reason why Kurumi's saving up. I'm not going to go into that. So, in come the anime. I pretty much know what to expect and everything. And they blast through this anime 
at a pace that is just absolutely unwarranted. The level of detail that they give in the anime going pat through this storyline, going through her trying to save her parents, finding out that Origami herself is a spirit. She's a spirit. That's her. That's her right there. That's, that's Origami. If you didn't know, now you know. That's Origami. Comes to find out, spoilers of course, comes to find out that her parents died because Origami herself kind of was kind of going nuts fighting and everything, and it was Origami in spirit form that killed her own parents. That, that that's that's a little bit of a mind, you know what I mean? You know, it's that's that's a little bit of trauma right there. And yeah, the the way that they do it in the anime is just like, eh, that's what happened. Who cares? I mean, really? I mean, it's Origami. Who cares, right? Oh, come on, I like origami. And uh, the, it's really hard for me to explain to you guys exactly how much detail is lost without actually going and reading the light novel. There is such a immense amount of detail loss. And he, he just while reading just watching the anime, reading the anime, man. Yeah. Uh, subtitles, right? I was right. It, it, it's horrid. It's absolutely horrid. And if you're watching the anime, you can kind of get that. They're jumping like bits and pieces pretty quick. They were pushing that story really quick when they could probably throw in like another whole season to this. Instead of like a 12 or 13 episode season, whatever the heck it was, it could have been, you know, a 20, an old school 26 episode full season. It didn't have to be this short little thing and then throwing Natsumi in there, which Natsumi as a character is not important at all. I hate it. Sorry for the fans that really like Natsumi. She is not important, period. She has nothing to do with the, how important this is. <sighs> or as how powerful Kurumi is. Or Shido's little meddling in there and everything. It's just, it's just horribly done. I absolutely despised it for that. But here's the other thing on top of that. The animation quality. My God! What did they do? Hire like a bunch of eight-year-olds, you know, just out of kindergarten with their crayons to animate this thing? My God, the animation is some of the most atrocious animation. Lackluster quality. I mean, you can't even barely call it animation. You can do, do better with a, you know, a post-it note pad and flipping it and everything. You just go like this, okay, you know, that's better animation. Oh my God, it's horrible. Daylight, season one and season two were, was, you know, good animation, good quality, good fight scenes and everything. Season three, there's a fight scene between Toka and Origami that is absolutely laughable. I, I can't explain this one. You have to watch it. My God, I mean, it, it, it's like she does a swing of a sword, and it's it's like three frames. It's like, burp, burp, burp. okay, there's her swing. You can actually count the frames as she's swinging. It was... It's, <laughs> And, and like the the aerial battles and everything where they're flying around it, it's it's so bad oh my god it's so bad no okay whatever animation studio is responsible for this what was it madhouse i don't know if i can't remember if it was madhouse i can't remember who it was but whatever animation studio that was handed this project i hope you're out of business I really hope that you are down the toilet, out of business, and gone completely. I don't care what animation studio it is. This is such an utterly horrid flop of and lack of skill in animation. Uncaring is what it is. It's an uncaring level of animation quality. Your business does not deserve to exist is how horrid that is. Oh my god. And I'm sure over in the corner right here, I'm trying to find some screenshots and examples of just how horrible the animation is. I mean, the eyes probably like bugging out and everything. It's, oh my God. Like, like seriously, if there's any reason to watch season three, it's not for the story because they butcher the story. It's not for the animation because they completely butcher the animation. It's to be disgusted. You watch this anime to be disgusted at how uncaring they did our day to life characters. The entire universe. The, the odd thing is, is supposedly, I keep hearing uh, season four is in production or something like that. It's like a side story or focusing on Kurumi, I think it was, which hopefully will be great. And hopefully that animation studio responsible for this piece of sh is not there. 
Okay. Do not use them. If you use them, I'm not watching it. Period. Do not go with the same animation studio. I don't care. Oh. So, I guess to su sum up, they rushed the story. They shouldn't have rushed the story. They could have done a full 26 episodes. They butchered the story. They butcher the animation to such a horrendous degree, it detracts from everything else. If you thought the story was bad, the animation just makes it that much worse. You can't enjoy it. I forced myself to watch the whole thing because it was Data Live. And I regret doing it because it kind of ruins my memories of, you know, reading this little guy. Oh my god. With that, like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Do yourself a favor. Do not watch Data Live Season 3. Find a translation of the light novel online, or if you know Japanese, read it your own self. Go buy it. The anime, the third season of the anime sucks. Bad. We'll see you in the next video.